thus, sweet child tovarishi, and I'm going to present to you something. And I'm going to present to you the biggest problem with the war on terror, the biggest hole in this whole sort of issue, and why it seems that that war is never ever going to be won. And I'll tell you why. Because as any of you might know, any of you who know the single smallest bit about strategy, about military strategy, you'll know that before you go out on a war, before you set out on this campaign, you set a victory condition. A condition which says, once this is fulfilled, the war is over, we've won, um, we get to bring our troops home, yay, um, good for us. And the problem with the war on terror is that there's no victory condition. There's no condition outlining when the Americans are going to say, this war is over, we've won, let's bring our troops home. Nothing. Okay, I can see uh, some comments now. I can see some people coming in now. They're going to say, oh, uh, uh, Stalin, uh, the, the end condition for the war on terror is uh, you kill all the terrorists. That's our victory condition. Our victory condition is you kill all the terrorists. That was kind of scary. I thought like someone was um, was like behind me opening and closing the, uh, the cupboard. Anyway, um, I'd say the victory condition is you kill all the terrorists. Okay. Okay, but that's not going to work. It's not going to work, and I'll tell you why. A couple of reasons. One, as soon as there's just, as long as there's just one terrorist left, as long as there's just one terrorist, then the war's not over. The war's never over. Two, what exactly defines a terrorist? Now, there's plenty of terrorists all over the world doing, you know, different terrorist tactics. Now, there's just, a, there was a bombing in the um, Russian metro, um, I can't remember what it was, month or so ago, you know, there's terrorist attacks all over the world. So what exactly defines a terrorist? And three, every time you kill a terrorist, you create another terrorist, because I believe it was Gwen Dyer who said this, that um, if any of you don't know who Gwen Dyer is, I highly recommend you check the guy out. He's a Canadian military historian. He does, he has written some great books. Um, he, he does some great lectures. I actually had the pleasure of seeing one of his lectures in person. It was fantastic. But anyway, he said that killing people tends to upset their relatives. So every time you kill a terrorist, that's someone's relative, and that relative gets angry at the people who killed the terrorist and then becomes a quote-unquote terrorist in their stead. So essentially you're creating this endless stream of bad guys, and unless you commit an entire genocide on the whole population of the area, you're never going to kill all the terrorists. Therefore, you're never going to end this war. Therefore, that makes that victory condition null and void. Okay, okay, I can see some other other comments uh, coming in. People saying the victory condition is we capture Osama bin Laden. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. I actually think that's a, a you know a very good and sufficient victory condition. But if you're going to capture Osama bin Laden, you're doing it the wrong way. You're not going to capture him by deploying, what was it, 50,000 more troops to Afghanistan, by putting 100,000 troops in a country where he might or might not be in. And um, that, that's not going to get him. If you want to catch Osama bin Laden, you use your intelligence network. You use the CIA to try and find some kind of trail, some kind of record of where he might go, likely positions he might go, and then deploy like a special forces team to that area and do a scout and search and, and try and find the guy. Because if you just deploy 50,000 troops in the area, you're not going to find him because he's no, he'll know you're coming. He'll know that there's a bunch of troops in this area and he'll just leave. He'll just go somewhere else and um, he'll just uh, make the whole situation worse, just go somewhere else. And I'm not convinced that Osama bin Laden is still alive, because uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but uh, at the time of the start of the war in Afghanistan, that Osama bin Laden uh, was on dialysis, and uh, I'm sure you may be able to figure out that carrying a dialysis machine through the desert is um, not exactly an easy task. So I think he's dead. I think he just died of his own health problems. But, um, I mean, if he, if he went to a hospital, would leave a trail, would leave a paper trail that people could follow, and then they'd be able to find him and locate where exactly he, he might be. So I don't think, um, I, I don't think he's still alive. I think he might be dead. And if you're actually going to try and find a solid in London, then you go about it a different way. Because the way you're doing it now is just not going to work, and you'll never be able to find the guy.
Okay, I can see some uh, some more victory conditions coming in. Another victory condition. We create a stable democracy in Afghanistan. We create a stable state there. And that's not going to work, and I'll tell you exactly why that's not going to work. Because, I don't know, it, it seems, it's a very key point in the War of Terror that most people, in North America at least, seem to uh, not be able to recognize and not be able to comprehend that the War on Terror is very, very ethnic. It's very, very ethnic because Afghanistan is divided into a bunch of ethnic groups, uh, the majority that make exclusively the groups like the Taliban and other groups that we have to fight against, or the Pashtuns. And they're the majority of people in Afghanistan. There's a bunch of other people, like a bunch of other uh, ethnic major minorities like the um, Uzbeks and the Tajiks. And uh, the Pashtuns and the Uzbeks and the Tajiks have kind of always had problems with each other and it's always uh, always been a going on in a civil war. Kind of, uh, kind of, sort of, to speak. And if you create a de democracy there, because most of the people are Pashtun, they're going to elect a Pashtun government, which is the people you just kicked out with the whole war on terror. All that you did with the with uh, this uh, war in Afghanistan is you kicked out the Pashtun warlords and then put instituted Tajik and Uzbek warlords in their stead, who are just as bad and just as evil and just as corrupt as the Taliban. So we're not. We're, doesn't matter who we support in this war; they're evil and corrupt and just bad guys, just as bad as the Taliban. So it doesn't really matter. So I think, I'm assuming that the American government knows this, that if they create a stable government in Afghanistan, if they create a stable democracy, because most of the people in the region are Pashtun, they're going to elect a Pashtun government and just put the Pashtun warlords back in power, and uh, that would just make the whole war on terror meaningless. So I don't know. None of these victory conditions seem to work, and I can't see an end game to this to this war on terror. What are, you, what are they trying to do? What is their whole goal? There doesn't seem to be a goal. There doesn't seem to be a victory condition. There's no end game to this war on terror. That's why it's a waste of time. That's why we shouldn't be there in the first place. That's why this war is never going to end in a victory, because there's no victory condition. There's no realistic, feasible victory condition that we can see. So, thank you guys for watching. This has been Joseph Feast, one of the Stalin. You got a difference of opinion? Love to hear it. Write it down in the comments. Um, still uh, waiting for some comments for my uh, America video, and I'm gonna. I'm working on some uh, my rebuttal video where I'm gonna take some of the comments and uh, and address them more personally in that video. But for now, just write down anything you might think would be a feasible feasible victory condition. Or, you know, write down uh, if you have a difference of opinion. Put it in the comments. Make sure you tell lots and lots of other people about this show. Make sure you tell lots and lots of other people. So maybe they can be mad at me too. Maybe you can tell all your political uh, friends about, you know, look at this guy. He's just a total nut job. Um, everybody, you know, come and watch watch his video and, and tell him how wrong he is. I would absolutely love to uh, love to see that. But for now, I'll see you guys later.